This is the Detroit Sports Podcast Network. The United Shore Professional Baseball League games at Jimmy John's Field are the fun family entertainment experience that you just can't afford to miss. It's Thirsty Thursdays, Firework Fridays, Live Music Saturdays, and Sunday Fun Day for the kids. And don't forget, kids get to run the bases after every game. And parking is always free. Jimmy John's Field in downtown Utica is your summer destination. Get your tickets today at USPBL.com. Welcome in, everybody, to the eighth edition of the USPBL podcast. I am the Doc, John Macaroon, joining me on Championship Week. Vito Churko. You can follow him on Twitter at Vito Jerome. For all information regarding the United Shore Professional Baseball League and the championship weekend that's going to take place Friday, Saturday, Sunday, go visit USPBL.com. Looking forward to a great conversation this week. Who is the guest on this week's podcast, Vito? It's the USPBL Player of the Week, Ethan Whisker of the Westside Woolly Mammoths, who have clinched the number one seed, and that means they will be playing in the championship game on Sunday at Jimmy John's Field automatically. And it's their first ever league pennant that they clinch as well by winning on Saturday night. And Ethan, in that contest, guess what? Tied the all-time home run record in the league with 25 career dingers. 14 on the season now for Ethan Whisker. So Ethan is our guest as well on this week's episode of the USPBL podcast. A great season. Willie Mammoth going to be in the championship game looking for the title. Sunday is going to be a great day, Vito. I love championship games. There's an opportunity to see the culmination of a year's work. I'm going to be fascinated to see who they're going to take on. The Willie Mammoths have a strong opportunity to take it down this year. They do. They do. And uh, Utica's right there as well. You got some good squads there. And it'll be fun, exciting to see for all the fans there that will gather on Sunday. And I know one of us at least will be there too to watch Championship Sunday at Jimmy John's Field in downtown Utica. And it is Ethan Whisker of the Westside Woolly Mammoths. Ethan, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Good to be here. How are you? Great to have you on. And, man, you are just tearing it up. You just set the league record, all-time league record for home runs hit with 25, 25 home runs to your name now, Ethan. And also because of that, you were just named the USPBL Player of the Week for this past week. But before all of that, this past Saturday night, you and your teammates with the Westside Woolly Mammoths clinched the league pennant, have the number one seed, and now automatically are playing in the league championship game on Sunday at Jimmy John's Field in downtown Utica. Ethan, what were the thoughts going through your head when you found out you had won the league pennant First time in Willie Mammoth's history, and now have the ability to play in the league title game on Sunday. You know, it was an awesome feeling. You know, I had two highs in that game. Uh, we won, uh, won my first place spot in the pennant in the championship game, and I had, I had the record for the home run. So that was a uh, pretty special night for me. Um, I had a bunch of family and friends come out to that game. I had probably close to 30 people come, which made it even more special for me. So uh, it was fun to play play well in front of all of them. Um, and more importantly, it was, it was an awesome team win for us. Um, this is the first time the Mammoths have made it to a championship game since, uh, since they've been in the league. And we're really looking forward to this Sunday's game. What was the environment like at Jimmy John's Field this past Saturday night? It was awesome. It was, uh, it was a solid crowd for sure. It seemed like there was a, uh, it was filled to the max, which I'm probably expecting for this weekend's games coming up uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So. so then specify that atmosphere that you expect for championship weekend at the ballpark, that is Jimmy John's Field in downtown Utica, from September 6th through September 8th, which is Friday through Sunday this weekend. For sure more sellout crowds. Uh, we have a very, very good crowd base coming to our games. Uh, we get a lot of support from our hometown folks, and uh, I, I expect nothing less this weekend, too, because, you know, it's the last weekend of the season. Everybody wants to come out and see some good baseball, and uh, there's some great players in the U.S. to be able to go do that for us. So, And fun times when you're hitting dingers like you do and you have this season as well. 
14 on the season, 25 all time for yourself in the USPBL. Once again, tied for a league record, which is incredible, Ethan. And as we know, the chicks yeah. dig the long balls. Really, everybody does in baseball. And then you do all this with the bat, hitting for power, and you have this record to your name. What does it mean to you to have set this league record? Uh, you know, it really means a lot. There's been a lot of really great players that have come through the league. Uh, I know, I think the single season record is 17 home runs, which uh, was a goal of mine to accomplish. Um, but, you know, this, this, we still have another game coming up on Sunday, and hopefully uh, I'll score up a couple balls and maybe put a couple over the fence. But, uh, you know, as, as long as as long as we, you know, put some runs up and win the game, I guess that's the most important thing, though. And once again, you tied the league record, all-time record. So not officially set, yep. but you might end up right. doing that. Now, how about just right, right. hitting for power, having that power stroke? What do you attribute that to? And also, a second question here for you, Ethan. Have you always been a guy that has hit for power? Yeah, I always have kind of been a guy that hits for power. Um, my senior year of college, I hit 12 home runs, which is the most I had hit in the season in college. Last year, I think I had 10 of them, and this year I had 14 in the SVBL. So uh, um, I've always been a pretty consistent power hitter, and I've always kind of been a weight room freak, I guess, like always working out, and uh, I guess I can attribute that to at least helping out some of my skills. So, Do you care at all about launch angle and exit velocity? Those things are so highly valued now in Major League Baseball, and it seems like Baseball nation and worldwide. How about yourself valuing those two items? Yeah, for sure. There's a the game is changing a little bit, kind of coming to a lot more statistics and numbers like that, like exit velocity and launch angle. Um, you know, it's really hard to go off the bat and think about those kind of numbers. Um, so I, I don't know. I just kind of go up and do it, and you know, hopefully the the results prove themselves, but I mean, you can't really go for that and hope to hit 115 mile an hour baseball over the fence or something. So, yeah, I don't know. I I think it's a cool, cool aspect of the game, but I also think it's important just to go up and be relaxed and, you know, just have fun with the game. Not not trying to think too much and do too much. So. And Ethan, let's backtrack here a little bit and get your story and your upbringing in baseball. What was your journey like through baseball before reaching the USPBL? I always wanted to play Major League Baseball. Was, ever since I played T-ball when I was, you know, six years old, <laughs> that was a dream of mine. And it, it was pretty cool to actually have that dream, you know, a possibility, especially um, after college. I didn't get drafted, um, tried out for this league, and, Really wanted to get signed by an affiliated team, and that was the, the next step for me. And hopefully, that's still, you know, a, an attainable goal. And maybe putting up these kind of numbers this year will we'll get that job done. So, and what have you learned through playing in the USPBL so far? I've gone through, you know, a lot of really great teammates. Um, playing in the USPBL has been a very, very cool experience for me. Um, never played in front of crowds this big or been in this kind of a baseball environment. Um, but it's been a very, very, very cool experience for me. Um, some baseball memories that I'll never get, never forget the rest of my life. How about your skipper with the West Side Wooly Mammoths, Brian Cloppy? What have you learned from him? You know, he's awesome. He's just, I think he's one of the... Um, most fun managers I've ever played for. Um, just really loves his players, and you can tell how much he cares about us. Um, really wants everybody to succeed, and will do everything he can to help us get there. Um, but he, he's very supportive of us, supportive of us all, and uh, I think that's that's one of the you know most important qualities in a manager is to believe in your teammates and believe in your team and know that we can go get the job done because. When we started off, we were not a great-looking team. We started off 3-11, and but he still believed in us. And, you know, we found a way to put some wins together. 
So what did he tell you and your teammates when you guys were 3-11 and to make the run that you guys have now to win the league pennant once again for the first time for the Woolly Mammoths in Woolly Mammoths history in the USPBL? What did he tell you guys and try to emphasize with you guys when you guys had started 3-11? and You know, baseball is a, a, a strange game, you know. It really depends on the pitcher that day, the hitters that day. Um, anybody can win. And even though we started off slow, um, he still believed in us as his players. And, you know, we just kept working hard at practice and kept telling us just to, you know, we're going to get there whether it's now or next week or whatever, but we're going to get there. And we finally did. And uh, I think this is the best record um, a USPBL team has had since the league's been around. And that's a pretty awesome feature for us, starting off the way we did and ending, ending the season like we did. How hard is it to keep grinding, though, when you're struggling or your teammates and your team are struggling? How hard is it to keep grinding and keep working hard to achieve a high level of success? You know, it's tough. Um, it's all a huge mental game as well. Uh, it's hard to go, you know, have an 0-4 for four day and come back, especially in this league when we only play three games a week. You'll get a couple of days off, so you really have a lot of time to ponder about what happened. Just try not to, you know, get in, get in your own heads. Uh, that's a little bit what... I think I was doing in the start of the year. I had a pretty slow start. Um, actually, only had two home runs up to the All Star break, and then twelve more since then. So, baseball's a funny game. It's a big, big mental game, and just believing in myself and relaxing, and Brian Cloppy helping me get there too. I think was a huge, huge factor for um, as many wins as the Mammoths had this year. So as you said, Ethan, yourself, the home runs weren't coming as easily for you before the All-Star break. But since you've been on a torrid pace, have hit all these home runs, once again, 14 on the season now for yourself. What has been the difference for you since the All-Star break? Um, I think the biggest difference for me is just swinging at better pitches and not chasing so many pitches. And earlier in the year, I found myself kind of drifting a little bit in my swing and um, getting my my lower half was kind of leaking forward, and I was rolling over pitches and not hitting balls square enough. Um, so I started kind of sitting back a little bit more and being a little more selective on pitches I swung at. And I was, I was finding barrels and uh, even balls that weren't going over the fence, I was still hitting harder. So uh, I think that was probably the biggest change that I made. So in the first half when you were struggling and maybe you were going through some 0 for 3, 0 for 4 days and nights, when that is the case, how do you mentally uh, remove yourself from that and move on from those tough games for yourself when you have gone once again 0 for 3, let's say, or 0 for 4? Well, it is tough. Um, It really gets in your head a little bit, you know. Um, You start thinking about numbers a little bit too much, but once you kind of just clear your head and focus on, you know, what can I do to help my team win this game today? And whether I do go for four, what can I do to help contribute to this win? And I started just going up and playing for fun, not really caring about the numbers anymore and just going there and, you know, like don't have the numbers running through my mind all the time and go and have fun. And I think that was the biggest change for me that uh, led to some of my success was just clearing my head a little bit and, playing the game that we all love. Who do you like watching at the major league level? Uh, a current big leaguer, it could be uh, a former big leaguer, but just in general, guys that you've tried to mold yourself after that have played at yeah. the next level, which I'm talking about major league baseball specifically here. Right. Well, I think this might be an obvious choice, but Mike Trout, I think he's the greatest baseball player to ever play the game. Just watching how he plays, his confidence on the field. Uh, his mechanics are flawless. Just it seems like everything he does all around the best player I've ever seen. So I think he's a very good guy to you know have a to, to model yourself against, and especially for younger kids growing up too. Uh, he's just a very very class act guy and an amazing baseball player. So specifically, what have you learned from Mike Trout and others in the big leagues? 
overall wise from watching big leaguers, what have you learned from those guys that has helped you out now in your career? You know, I just, I just really enjoy watching them. It amazes me, and I'm so impressed with everybody that has made it that far to the MLB, which is amazing. And I don't know if you knew this, we had our first USPBL player make it to the major leagues. His name was Ryan Dobnek, a pitcher for the Minnesota Twins. But even just looking at him, it's, it's amazing that he made it that far. And it kind of gives us hope in our league right now that um, – you know, there's a chance for all of us to make it to the next level. Um, but I've always enjoyed watching Major League Baseball. I love going to games. It's just still a huge dream of mine to play in the MLB. Um, but you know, you can learn. You can learn from every player that plays that game. You know, they're there for a reason, and they didn't make it that far. If, you know, they weren't good enough. So. And as you said, Randy Dobnak, a pitcher with the Minnesota Twins, has reached the big leagues. And actually, he was the opener on Tuesday night against the Boston yep. Red Sox. So hope for you and That's others right. in the USPBL to be able to reach the big leagues one day. But for you now, Ethan, specifically, what do you need to continue working on in order to get inked by a Major League Baseball organization one day? Well, it was... Uh... Hopefully, hopefully the plan was to have gotten signed out of this league. But, um, you know, I think putting up consistent numbers and continuing to work hard in the offseason, I think sometimes there's going to be a chance that provides itself, whether it's right now or next next summer. But I really don't know. Um, but I know that I'll continue to keep working hard to do it, though, no matter how long it takes. Andy Appleby, the CEO of the league, has been on our podcast before and has talked about how great the league is and how great it's become in only year number four of the league in downtown Utica, Michigan. So it's been terrifically run so far, and a lot of success has been garnered. But from your perspective now, Ethan, as a player, what would be your pitch to those that are considering joining or trying to get a shot in the USPBL themselves? Yeah, um, especially guys that didn't get drafted out of college, you know, and think they're still good enough to play. Come out to the tryout. Um, there's nothing to really lose. There's been, you know, we've had huge success on getting players signed into affiliate baseball, which is obviously the goal. And so anybody that wants to continue playing their career, um, as long as you're wearing a jersey, no matter what team you're playing for, there's there's always a chance, and especially if you're playing at a high level high-level baseball league like the USVBL is. So. And I'll piggybacking off of that, what would you say makes a league unique and from other developmental baseball leagues throughout the country? Um, I think it is unique in that we play only play three games a week, which I think might kind of give it, the pitchers a little bit of an advantage because pitchers might not get in that consistent uh, routine of seeing live pitching every day. but. Um, Besides that point, I think it's unique in that everybody, even though there's four different teams, I think everybody's still kind of rooting for each other, too. Like, when some guy gets signed out of the league, you know, everybody's excited. And, like, that's obviously the goal. And everybody that works for the league, like, whether you're the Beavers manager or the Hoppers manager, you can always go to um, for some advice. And they're always, you know, looking out for all the, all the players in the league. And everybody's just kind of rooting for each other. Even though we're playing against each other, we're still, you know, uh, still one family in the USPBL. And the goal is to get players into affiliated baseball. What should fans expect from the Woolly Mammoths on Championship Sunday? You know, we're we're expecting a, a W, the first championship the Woolly Mammoths, you know, have won. So we're really looking forward to this game. And we've been prepping really hard at practice. We have practice at uh, 1030 today and you know, I'm, I'm excited to get going and it seems like it's a long ways away, but it'll get here before we know it. It's coming here. It's rapidly approaching on Sunday at Jimmy John's field in downtown Utica. Now, are you willing to guarantee a W out of your woolly mammoths on Sunday? Yeah, I'm willing to guarantee it. <laughs> I believe in our lineup and you know, I'm 
you want to come watch the man wrestle win on Sunday, come on out. <laughs> Guaranteeing a W. Ethan Whisker is from the Westside Woolly Mammoths. And with that team nickname, I got to ask you, do you know what a Woolly Mammoth actually is? Because I've been trying to figure it out. So if you do know what a Woolly Mammoth is, can you elaborate to my listeners and I about what that <laughs> is? Um, I guess. Uh, I think it's just a almost like a prehistoric elephant that kind of got extinct a long, long time ago. I have no idea the history or how many of them there were, but um, that's kind of just my understanding of one. And I, believe it or not, I actually heard that they had found old woolly mammoth bones either in Utica or around the area or something. And that's one of the reasons why we got a team name. I'm not for sure about that fact, um, but that's kind of one of the rumors around. Well, you know what? Maybe my producer, my co-host, John Macron, you and I, Ethan, can go dig up some uh, bones then in Utica. That'd be really cool and really fun, I think, for all of us here. And also, what will be really fun, once again, is Championship Sunday and in its entirety, Championship Weekend at Jimmy John's Field this weekend in downtown Utica, Michigan. And Ethan, with that being said, best of luck to you and your teammates on Sunday at Jimmy John's Field, and we'll talk again soon. All right. Thank you for having me. Thanks so much. Vito, interesting interview. Ethan Whisker, obviously a guy that has some power, has the ability to launch the baseball, and I like the fact that you talked to him about launch angle and his thoughts about baseball, and he did a really good job in terms of selling the United Shore Professional Baseball League, and I think when you're an independent league and you're looking for new athletes, it's definitely important to have a good reputation, and obviously the first couple years, the USPBL has always had a good reputation but the quality of play has drastically improved. The development has improved. I mean, almost every week you heard about a player that was being signed to an organization, and that can only bode well for the USPBL. Absolutely, and Ethan was a pleasure to speak with. Him and his Willie Mammoths play in the championship game in the USPBL on Sunday at Jimmy John's Field in downtown Utica. Best of luck to him and his teammates on Sunday, and guess what? John, I think you heard it. He guaranteed a W out of his woolly mammoths on Sunday. Was willing to go that far. I put him on the spot, and he said big things are happening coming up this Sunday at Jimmy John's Field for him and his woolly mammoth teammates once again. This is an individual, by the way, John Macaroon, who has earned the USPBL Player of the Week for two times this season and five times in his career, has tied the all-time league record for home runs with 25 bombs now in his career. 14 on the season as well. And him and his woolly mammoths. Now, they clinched the number one seed in the U.S. PBL playoffs by blanking the Utica Unicorns this past Saturday night by a score of 7 to nothing. And also against the Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers, that is the Chris Newell-led Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers on Friday night, Whisker went 2-for-3 with the home run as the Mammoths beat the Beavers 5-4. to four. For the week, Whisker hit 417 with an impressive 1,000 plus slugging percentage and 500 on base percentage. His 14 home runs this season ranked third all time in single season history behind Nick Wilson, who hit 17 with the Beavers, and Austin Crutcher, who hit 15 with the Unicorns. So, championship weekend, once again, a big shout out for that is happening this weekend, September 6 through 8 at Jimmy John's Field, and it will be presented by our Credit Union. The first 250 fans on Friday and Saturday will receive championship weekend t-shirts, and the last fireworks spectacular of the season will take place on Friday night. Superheroes will be at the ballpark on championship Sunday, courtesy of Fairytale Entertainment, along with Scott's Lawn Care Rally Towels. So make time for fun at Jimmy John's Field, which is your summer destination for baseball, John. Definitely get out there. The playoffs, it's a time when, you know, you're going to be eliminated. It's a situation in which you got to go out there and perform. And I love championship weekend. I've been out there the last couple years, and it's a fun environment. And uh, Ethan talked about it. This Sunday, he's going to bring it. He's going to hopefully maybe be able to contribute, maybe even wow the crowd a little bit with the home run. And maybe break the record. Remember, if he hits another home run, he breaks the all-time league record for home runs. That would be his 26th bomb of his career, and 15th of the season. So he's right there in terms of league leaders, John. For all information regarding the United Shore Professional Baseball League, don't hesitate. Visit USPBL.com. If you don't have an opportunity to go out there 
if you reside far away from Jimmy John's Field. All you got to do, Vito, they do great work digitally. They got a YouTube channel where you can go and watch old videos, highlights. When Luke Johnson made SportsCenter's Top 10, number two on number the two list. Number play, baby. Best of all time in the USPBL. You can see that on the YouTube channel. They stream games as well, so you can follow along with the action. Vito, it's right here. It's right in your backyard. If you're in Utica, don't miss out. Some people will say, well, you know, I'm not sure about it. Trust us. We wouldn't bring on these great guests. We wouldn't work with the United Shore Professional Baseball League if it wasn't a quality-run organization. They really make it fan-friendly. They make it friendly for kids. Every time I've been out there, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to championship weekend. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And you know what? I'll say this. For the value, for what you pay for the ticket— your experience will far outweigh what you pay. You'll have a good time, affordable prices, a good experience. And like with anything, when you're watching baseball, we can have a conversation. We can watch the game. And if you want, you can passively, you know, the seats are very comfortable. You can have great conversations, share some memories a little bit, and, uh, you know, share good experiences in Utica. Vito, right here in downtown Utica, it'll be a great time. And I'm looking forward to championship weekend. So many great guests that we've already had on on this USPBL podcast. Players, coaches, league, just personnel. And all have been terrific, including Ethan Whisker of the Westside Woolly Mammoths on this week's episode of the USPBL pod. As we get into, once again, championship weekend this weekend at Jimmy John's Field in downtown Utica, Michigan. John, it's been a pleasure speaking with you, with Ethan as well. And we'll talk to you guys again next week on the latest edition of the USPBL podcast. Adios. The United Shore Professional Baseball League games at Jimmy John's Field are the fun family entertainment experience that you just can't afford to miss. It's Thirsty Thursdays, Firework Fridays, Live Music Saturdays, and Sunday Fun Day for the kids. And don't forget, kids get to run the bases after every game. And parking is always free. Jimmy John's Field in downtown Utica is your summer destination. Get your tickets today at USPBL.com.